If you're interested in learning more about BetAngel, its tools and the opportunities they present, then why not visit BetAngel.com today and download a free trial. So, here's another little video to highlight some future opportunities for you. We've gone through the Cheltenham Festival and we go through a little bit of a dead patch. It's quite common to go through a dead patch immediately after a big festival. And we're transitioning away from the jump season and into the flat. So you necessarily get a little bit of a, a jumbled up area here. But the next big meeting is almost upon us. It's the Aintree Grand National Meeting. Now, obviously, as the name suggests, the feature race is the Grand National. And that's generally the biggest target. The Grand National is one of the few um, races that I can trade for a long period of time because the money just flows through the Grand National pretty consistently throughout the day. It's a, it's a rare race from that perspective. You can do a lot on it over a long period of time. The overall turnover of the Grand National has typically been about 10 million, uh, which is pretty huge to be honest, um, especially for a competitive handicap and it's a 40 runner competitive handicap as well. Um, but obviously that's the feature race. It's shifted over the years. It's now at the end of the day. It used to occur at six, uh, quarter past five. I was going to say 16, 15. And they've, they've pushed it towards the back of the card now. And that's changed the dynamics a bit. There's more time for the money to arrive and, you know, various other elements. But I've generally done pretty well at it. And it's generally been a huge volume race for me. But part of that is because I'm active on it for most of the day. When you get to the day of market, uh, you'll find that there are 44 runners because there are four reserves in. They get removed um, as we approach midday. So always be aware of that, that there will be reserve runners in the market. That's something to be important of. But it's a huge race, huge turnover. And some of the other races around there can be pretty good. Um, the problem that you have is on the Thursday and the Friday, you obviously get some feature races in there, but it's surrounded by other stuff. Um, so they're not quite as good, but over those three days, they're obviously three huge days. However, on the Saturday as well, um, the, the thing that happens from Thursday until Sunday is the US Masters Golf. So, you know, if you're trading the golf, then that can be pretty huge as well. And the Masters is actually my favorite golf tournament of the year because it's played at the same course every year. Um, and I've got better and better at it over the years. If you look at my results from a few years ago, they've just gradually risen and risen and risen. And, um, and you know, and obviously I've got the Grand National meeting on, I've got uh, golf at uh, Augusta. However, it gets even better. Uh, if you're from Australia, then you'll know that it's a really huge racing day in Australia as well. So you've got the golf at Augusta, you've got the Grand National meeting, and you've got quality racing on um, in Australian markets on the Saturday morning. So it's an absolutely huge Saturday and if you're doing all those three then it's probably one of the biggest Saturdays of the entire year. Obviously it depends upon your trading and that but certainly for uh, Australian racing and uh, the racing in the UK it's massive anyway. So if you do do a bit of Australian racing or you are Australian um, then it will be a day that you really want to be behind your desk and actively trading. In fact it's a good example of um, why Saturdays are so important to me because there's so much going on over this little period Thursday, Friday and Saturday but particularly Saturday that I couldn't really give it up for anything and that's why we don't run courses on a Saturday and we try and clear the decks around these key meetings we don't want to be doing anything in or around these times we just want to be totally focused on the trading because these opportunities don't come around that, that often um, and therefore you want to make full advantage of the really really big days when they're there because if you can make uh, a good use of those big days, then you will make a lot of money. You don't really want to be doing anything else on those particular days. But um, the, the funny thing about this as well is this is such an important day to me and, and anybody that does this full time will know how important it is to hit these big days hard, that uh, you can run into a few problems, or I certainly have in, in previous years. And uh, the, the problem is a unique one. And that because we've got racing on the Thursday, Friday and the Saturday and we've got golf in Augusta, the problem with the golf is it will sort of finish around 11, 12 o'clock at night. So if you're actively trading it, um, you really want to be taking full advantage of that, especially on the Friday night because they're heading into the cut where half the field vanishes. So that's an important evening on the golf is the Friday evening. But the problem that I have is, obviously, if I'm trading the golf going into Friday evening and the Australian racing starts just after that, then basically, you know, there's no opportunity to go to sleep. <laughs> and um, you could probably have a sleep first thing in the morning. 
and then we go into the Grand National uh, meeting on, on, the, on the Saturday, you know, it's, a, it's just a huge day. So the problem I had, and it's happened to me a couple of times now, is that um, I was asked to do an interview on BBC Radio. And they invited me over and they said, yeah, no, just pop along on Saturday morning for the breakfast show. And I'm thinking, oh, no, <laughs> because it's like I've been up since midnight, decided not to bother going to sleep, did the Australian racing. And I would normally get that little bit of sleep in the morning to try and recharge my batteries for the day. But in fact, you know, the, the Grand National Market is so huge that sometimes I felt like I was missing out on those few hours in the morning uh, where I was asleep. However, if you're going to do an interview and it's going to be sort of around sort of eight, nine o'clock or maybe slightly later or maybe slightly earlier, um, I can't go back to sleep. So when I did an interview, I can't remember if it was 2011 or 2013, I did actually mention it during the interview that I'd been up early that morning. So what's your day now? And Absolutely. you're going to fiddle with your computer and make four grand in the afternoon. Well, the day actually started for me at three o'clock this morning. Oh, stop. <laughs> so, but, but you don't know anything about Australian racing, but it doesn't matter, I suppose. And in fact, what I did was I had about three hours worth of sleep from when the Masters ended to when I started to do some of the group racing in Australia. And I just didn't bother going back to sleep again. Finished the Australian racing, had a shower, went and did the interview, got back to the office and started trading the Grand National Meeting at Aintree. So yeah, that's how important the day is to me, um, that I will go without sleep if necessary uh, to try and do everything I can in that particular period of time. Now, I'm not for a second suggesting that you do the golf, you do the Australian racing and the Aintree Grand National Meeting. Um, that may be a little bit over the top, but even on their own, it, it creates a day that I just wouldn't give up for anything, whether it's just trading the UK racing, just trading the golf, or just trading the Australian racing. They're all equally as important to each other. If you can do them all together, then um, fantastic. As I go through my career, I think I'm getting a bit more relaxed and probably will not um, go as aggressively if I ha has, as I have done in the past, but it was really important for me to do that, to prove that I could do it because that's what trading's all about. You know, you get those real highs when you have utterly fantastic days that are beyond the belief of anybody in terms of what you could pull, on on the, pull in on those particular days. And you know, you do get a massive buzz from that. So if you're a total masochist, uh, do the golf, Australian racing, and the Grand National meeting. Um, or if you're more normal, then maybe you just do one of them, but it's a day that you wouldn't miss for anything. And um, these are the sort of days that I just earmark and make sure that we've got no training on, and I wouldn't do training on a Saturday anyway, um, that my diary is clear, I've got no commitments, there's nothing unusual going on with family commitments and so on and so forth, and these are days that are just immovable objects. You know, I have to be there and to do it. And the Grand National is key, because if I get a great result there, I'll get a fantastic day. And even if I don't get a fantastic result there, I've probably picked up good money from elsewhere. So yeah, it's a big and important key period coming up, that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, depending upon whatever sports you do. But even if it's just the UK racing, then the Entry Grand National meeting uh, should be a key focus for you.